Hey, it's Scott Tempesta from Sailing Anarchy. This is yet another of our retro look videos where we take a step back in time, look at some of the classics from eras gone by. Today, we are really going back. I'd like you to say hello to the 10 meter Sally. It's about as gorgeous as a boat can possibly be. It's about as classic as a boat can possibly be. This particular boat is hole number 12. 14 of them were built in total. They were built over in Germany by Abiking and Rasmussen, designed by William Burgess, and they shipped them all from Germany to the United States. Most of them all went to New York as part of a New York Yacht Club fleet. They raised them basically one design. This boat ended up here in the hands of C.F. Kohler from Kohler Craft, and he has done a magnificent job of a restoration on this boat. It's nothing short of stunning. They actually let me aboard, and the first thing that pops to mind to me, a boat from this era, this vintage, one of the things they didn't quite have figured out was cockpit size. And the cockpit size on this boat, relative to the length, is just tiny. That's how they did it back then. Winches were close together, primaries and secondaries. Wheel, good size wheel on the boat, proper little table, and then decent benches. But again, if this was a modern boat, this would probably be twice this length, but it's not. It's a classic. It's how these boats were built, how they were designed, and how they look. It's, it's space efficient, as long as you don't cram it full of visitors, they can sit up there somewhere. But it's interesting just to note how the boat is with the cockpit fairly far aft and relatively compact. These boats actually came with tillers and the tiller was long. As you can imagine, you need a little bit of leverage to hoist this boat around. This boat weighs 55,000 pounds. That's a pretty heavy boat. So when they retrofitted the boat, they added a proper wheel to it, which makes some sense so that you don't have to clear out the cockpit with the super long tiller. So that's a nice little adaptation they made to this boat. Really nice to sit back here, if they'll actually let me sit back here uh, and steer the boat and bark orders. It's kind of what I do. All right, here I am. I have a winch handle. Yes, I understand it's connected to a winch. Not sure how to operate it. They tell me that you turn the handle and the line comes in, but I've never actually operated one. This is a halyard, right? You think it's kind of close to the mast, maybe a stay sail sheet. No, this is the main sheet. This is where you trim the main. Way out of the cockpit, actually more midships than anything else. Typically you'd find a main sheet being adjusted and trimmed from back there. But no, this boat has it all up here. Now what's, what I've learned about this boat is this is actually the lazy man's job in some ways because you can just, when the weather's a little snotty or maybe you're a little lazy, you just drop down here through this hatch. Somebody says something about mainsail trim. You poke up, take a look, you go, yeah, reach out, give it a crank. That's it, my job's done. Go down below. Not really, actually. This thing takes three people to get it done right in terms of jibing, getting the thing in after a lured mark, just normal trim. It's not actually the easiest job in the world, although I've done my best to try to make it look like it is. When was the last time you were on a boat that had its winches on the mast? Probably a long time ago. This boat, that's where all the halyards, all the controls are right here. This has got a wire reel mainsail wire. It's a two to one block. It's like 170 feet. Crank it up with this. It's got a lock, it's got a brake on it. And then you also crank it down when you want to lower the thing. Looks scary because it is scary. You just don't want to, you don't want that thing to slip. You don't want to mismanage the handles. There's basically, this is unlocking and for bringing it down. It's very, it's sort of a complex, but it's all in beautiful condition. The spinnaker pole, that's a chain drive right there. You don't see that on any FAR 40, I'll tell you that. It's true to the nature of the boat. It's true to the time of the boat. This boat, it's interesting about this boat. So CF Kohler, who owns it, races the boat and they have gone to asymmetricals. What kind of asymmetrical? A TP-52 asymmetrical is what they fly off of this, this boat. It has a masthead asymmetrical that this baby flies, and so, and it's quick on a reach. I mean, this boat was born to reach anyway, narrow, long water line, heavy displacement, and so they have, you know, the original wood mass and these old school fittings and winches 
that seem completely appropriate when you take into context the age of the boat, but then you put up a TP52 asymmetrical and boom. Now we're on the Ford Eck, a place I rarely venture to. But the one thing I want you to notice, not only is it nice and super clean, you have a four guy winch here. You have a windlass up here, but really this is just magnificent. But really I want you to see the pole, a wooden spinnaker pole. And it's not exactly short. This is made out of spruce. I'm told it's relatively light once you take the big giant fittings off the end. And it's just, again, like we've said a few times on this boat, you just don't see these anymore. So that's on deck. You get a good idea for what happens up here. Now let's go down below. This gets interesting. So I've just entered down below from the cockpit. There are two ways to get down below the boat. The nice thing about this is you come down and you are in the owner's stateroom. And again, being a narrow boat, but being a boat that is just so steeped in tradition with just beautiful varnish, it's got a very interesting layout. This is the double bunk here for the owner, I'm assuming, and his girlfriend, if he can snag one. This is for the whipping boy on the boat. I don't know who that would be. I'm guessing Justin would probably be the whipping boy. Uh, lots of storage. Uh, here's the thing you really want to see here. This is the booze, but it's not just any booze. Normally you come on a boat and there's booze, right? There's a couple bottles, whatever. No, 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 there's all of that, but this is the reserve booze. One of the things that CF Kohler did to this boat that really made it a little more functional, more usable, and a little bit more traditional, is he put the galley here. When these boats were originally designed and built, they had the galley all the way forward where the crew quarters were as well. And that's where the crew is meant to be with the cooking and the drinking stuff. And then you, they stayed up there. This was, I designed for owner and friends. So you have the really nice owner stateroom here, but now you've made it actual more of a traditional layout in the main salon. The galley here, uh, of course, refrigeration. I don't believe that came with the boat in 1927. Um, a nice little navigator station right here. And it's really beautiful because it's nicely vented with the opening mid hatch. It's got nice glass for nice lighting down below. This boat is beautifully done in terms of the glass work. Uh, some of the added woodwork to the boat really fits in nicely. It's got a beautiful heater that you don't really need too much in San Diego, but I'm told there are times when that does get used and really it's comfortable, it's traditional. You feel like you're, you know, you're in a time warp and you really are. I mean, imagine what this boat was like. I mean, it's much like this and it's, it's just incredible to, to be a part of it for sure. Now we're forward in the boat and this is where the galley actually used to be. This entire section was all galley. And you can see it's, you know, it'll be a little awkward to have everything up here. So as I said, CF moved it back there, created a nice little bunk here. Here's what's funny about this boat is there's actually, you sort of walk up a ramp because this follows the hull with these boats. I mean, they were fairly shallow in the initial section. And so this really does follow the shape of the hull down below. So it's not that I'm tall, I'm just walking uphill. Um, crew quarters would typically be here. This boat has pipe berth for sail storage. Maybe you put your drunken crew up there and strap them into the pipers. I don't really know how it works on this boat, although I'm about to find out. And this is really where the heavy stuff is kept, sails, sheets, everything up here. And again, another way to get down through the boat right in this area. Last but not least, here's the head. Okay. It's not really worth going in and explaining it. You pretty much know how it works, but it's nicely done, compact, and uh, it's a head. But we're not going to end this thing on the head. No, we're going to go sailing. Sailing on the Sally, it's, by the way, it's the first time I've ever sailed on it. It is amazing in that it has this grace to it. It has a motion that is old worldly, that is almost otherworldly. It's smooth. As I mentioned, it's graceful. The boat has a certain feel to it. It's very easy to steer. In fact, 
I've been oversteering the boat all goddamn day. The boat basically will just steer itself. It's just incredible. We didn't have a lot of breeze today. We had the small jib up, but even still, the boat went through the water beautifully. It's remarkably easy to tack. Maneuvers are not that hard. Of course, it helps to have some skilled people on the boat, like C.F. Kohler, for example, and his beautiful wife, Amanda. It's peaceful. Um, it feels like you're sailing on a, a piece of history and you really are. And this boat in particular and what CF Kohler has done to this boat, it just all comes to life. It's frigging beautiful. That's a wrap for our latest retro look video. Today, as you know, we're on board the 10 meter Sally. We like to go back in time with these videos, show you some boats from the past, a little bit of history. This here is some deep history, 1927-ish. If you like this video, there's a playlist button up there. Hit that. There's a ton more of these. If you'd like to subscribe, which you should, do that. And by all means, smash the like button. Please do. Now, you may notice I'm kind of pimp, right? You want to be a pimp? You can be a pimp just like me. Although you have to bring your own pimp outfit. You can charter this wonderful, amazing boat. Simply go to woodenyacht.com. Find all the deets there. Who knows, maybe we'll see you on board the Sally someday. For Sailing Anarchy, I'm Scott Tempesta. We're out here. Let me tell you a little story about this boat. Come over here. Almost nobody knows this. About 30 years ago, Amazingly enough, I was working for Sobstad Sailmakers. We had a product line called Genesis, which was a fabulous Kevlar string sail, actually the first string sail ever. But we also then developed a polyester line of, of Genesis sails. They'd be less expensive, maybe more appropriate for cruising, less competitive race boats. Somehow I got CF to buy a mainsail. Great. Got the order, measured everything, measured it twice, fantastic. Brought the sail down, CF's here with his crew, here comes a new sail, ooh, Genesis, ooh, ah. We go, we put, this, put the sail up, hoist it up, and the leech on the mainsail was literally this much too long. So while it was great at the tack, at the clue, the boom was bouncing off of the wheel. Like, it was completely unusable and I looked like such an imbecile, and I had no excuse. I was basically like, I'm, I, I got nothing. That's what it was, 30 years ago, and here we are today. I'm not selling him anything. I'm going for a ride.